Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more DCS World. And we are in the MI-8, my favorite helicopter. Okay, so I realize that I've been doing a few missions, but never really showed you how to start this sucker. And I had a good bit of experience in X-Plane 10 when I got the Hilo for this, which is freeware by the way. And I decided to come back to DCS and take the knowledge that I'd learned there and see if I can translate it here. So, tonight, we're going to officially go through the cold start training. Alright, so, uh, let's see. It starts out with all the usual notes. Uh, make sure you remember these keys. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we know all of that stuff. So, let's take a quick look at Big Bertha. As you can see, I've made slight modifications. This is the Navy of Russia livery. Don't ask me why their navy has green helicopters, but hey, it's a thing, so I'm not going to judge. All the same, though, it does look rather pretty. They originally had me set up in the gray color, as you can see the helicopter over there. That was what this one was originally set up as, but I changed it. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and work with this. All right, let me change my angle here, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so we need to press space when we're ready to begin. Alright, startup process will consist of the following basic elements. Provide electrical power to the helicopter, start the uh, APU or auxiliary power unit, followed by the main engines, and then turn on and set up essential avionics equipment required for flight. Okay, and they're reminding us that we can switch seats at any time. See, right now we're in my seat, the pilot in command, and you can see my two buddies over there who I have yet to name. I might just call them Boris and Ivan just because. But we can switch to them by pressing the number 2 or the number 3. So let's go to the number 3, and that'll put us in the middle seat. Oh wow, I never really realized they have like a little badge on this side there. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty neat. Okay, so this is the flight engineer seat, and then to switch to the co-pilot seat, we're going to switch to number two. There we go, we're in a co-pilot seat. They love it, love it, love it. Now the co-pilot has slightly different controls from the pilot. So the pilot has all the main controls uh, concerning like the engine and our airspeed and so on and so forth. The co-pilot, on the other hand, has controls such as the gas gauge, which is this one right in the center of your screen with a yellow dot in the center and uh, also controls for like bombs and so on and so forth in addition to which above his head you'll see some other controls for weapon systems which are vastly different from what's on the pilot's side alright let's go back to my seat and we'll press space okay so before we begin it says make sure the rotor brake flight and engine controls are properly set for a start so off to the right hand side you will see they've already highlighted the pilot side rotor brakes so we're gonna gonna want we're gonna want to like uh, flip that down there okay there we go and let's see the next thing we're gonna want to do is provide electrical power to the aircraft and they say normally this is done with the help of ground crew using a cable link to a special power vehicle in other words like a GPU unit but we're gonna use onboard power for this so first thing we need to do is turn on the batteries and since that's on the co-pilot side we'll go ahead and press 2 we'll have our co-pilot do it here that's one that's two alright next order of business on the rear right console the AC control panel we need to set the inverter switches down to the automatic position so we'll zoom in just a touch so we can see what we're doing here 
And we will left click to switch them down. There we go. Alright, so now that we have that done, the next thing we need to do is we need to flick all the circuit breakers. And honestly, for people who are just coming in to the MI8 hip, this is probably the most daunting looking portion of it. When you see all of this, you stop dead in your tracks like, oh my god, I gotta flip everything? Are you kidding me? Just to start the damn thing up? I'm going to tell you how we'll do it real easy. We can zoom in here, and you'll notice at the bottom of each of these switches is a little black thing with uh, like a little, um, I don't even know what to call that thing. There's a tab or something. You can use this, and it'll flick all the switches up at the same time. So we're going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five and six. Now if you'll notice three switches are still highlighted. They're saying that those switches are switches that we don't necessarily need to have on. Those are the anti-ice system switches. So we can go ahead and uh, click those back off. There we go. And while we're sitting in the middle seat here the next thing we need to do is turn on the fire extinguisher circuits. So we'll flip that up that needs to be it off so it is that's fine and then we need to get some fuel available for this hel helicopter here so we'll flick the switches there and there and we'll close the covers and then we'll get the three fuel pumps on alright next order of business APU smack dab in the center of your screen we're gonna wanna flick this up to the start position and as you can see it's telling us we need to push the button now when we push the button we're gonna be watching this gauge right here so here we go let's do this it says it that should stabilize to just below 720 degrees centigrade within 20 seconds this is also the time where there is fire coming out of the back of the APU there. We missed it, but trust me, it pops up there. So don't be alarmed if you see flames coming out of your helicopter when you're trying to start up. This is normal. Alright, so now that we have the APU going and it's in the right position, the next thing we need to do is start the engines. So I'm going to keep it in the flight engineer's seat and we're gonna go ahead and get the starting panel set up the way it should so on the leftmost switch you'll notice if we move it to the left that'll help us start the left engine if we move it to the right that will help us start the right engine seems pretty logical right so we'll go ahead and flick that that way and we'll go ahead and flip this up now we're ready to start so before we push the button I want to zoom out a little bit because you'll notice that it has the fuel cutoff lever highlighted so here's how we're gonna do it first we're gonna push down the button for about two to three seconds and then as soon as it starts spooling up we'll go ahead and flip the lever so here we go one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi let go and fuel on now let's switch back to my seat we want to make sure that the needle is in fact moving and as you can see it is it should stabilize between 70 and 75 percent rpm that's what we're looking for so this might take a while if you got a drink i suggest you go get it because this thing is just going to take its own sweet time Okay, looks like everything is stable. Just above 70, I would say about 72% RPM. This is fine by me. So we're going to want to get the second engine on. Uh, we're also waiting for the little uh, tutorial thing to pop up here. There we go. Okay. So, real easy. 
first we want to flip this over the other way and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing we push the button hold it down for two to three seconds and then get some fuel introduced into the engine so one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi let go zoom out click you and check the gauge there we go so you have that drink right because uh, you might want to finish it up here Okay, that is looking stable. And one thing I neglected to do was to turn on some lights before we started doing this whole procedure. So let's go over to the co-pilot position and we'll flick some switches here. Let's get anti-collision, blade tip. While we're at it, we'll flick the formation and nav lights on. Okay. It says, with both engines idling normally, let's bring up the power. All right, now, I'm gonna show you where that is. We have our collective, which is one of the main devices that you're gonna use to fly a helicopter. You'll notice there's a ribbed area, and that is ribbed for our pleasure. That is your throttle. So we're gonna wanna raise the throttle in order to get the RPMs up to about 95%, roughly. I have that bound to my X-52, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that done. You'll notice those two levers come up as well. I'm not 100% sure what those levers... levers. Ugh, I can't speak anymore. I'm not sure what those levers do, but they help. Okay, so we're up to 95%, so we're good to go. We can now turn off the APU, and I think I can reach it from here. APU is off. Okay, so that's phase two. Now for phase three, we need to turn on all the other good stuff that we need before we can take off. So let's hop back over to the co-pilot seat. And first things first, we got some generators that we need to turn on. There's one, there's two. In addition to generators, we need rectifiers. So one, two, and three. And then we start with this little panel here. So we get that on, that on, and that on. Incidentally, I don't know if I told you, but this panel that we're looking at here obviously is in English. This is a mod that you can get for this helicopter from the DCS uh, user download site. So keep that in mind, it does help, otherwise everything you're looking at is going to be in Russian, and I don't know how you feel about that if you're not in Russia. Alright, let's go back to my seat, and we'll work on this side. So, we need the gyro, gyro cutout switch, pitch limiter system, and bitch and Betty. That's bitch and Betty. The rest of this stuff we're not really going to worry about because that has to do with weapons and anti-icing and so on. One thing we will do, however, we'll switch this radio to radio. Alright, we're almost done. Now, this next thing that we're going to be hitting here, I don't normally use in flight. They recommend that you do that as part of the startup sequence, so I'm going to do that. But just be advised, before we take off, I'm going to be turning this sucker back off. So, this is the autopilot controls. And it's on. But remember, I do not fly with it on. That's, that's just a thing that I have, so I'm going to be turning that off after. Alright, and one of the last things that we need to do, aside from closing this window because it's so damn loud outside. There we go, much better. 
the other side closed? Yes, it is. Okay. So, one of the last things that we need to do is we need to get the radio altimeter, or radar, excuse me, altimeter going. Now, it's going to take a few seconds. As you can see, it's gone past its limit. It'll come back down to zero, and it'll make a warning sound. The reason for that warning sound, you'll notice the green triangle just below 100 meters. That's currently our decision altitude set there. So when we go below that, the warning will sound. So what we do to get rid of that is we're going to want to put it to zero and then set it to where we want to have it. However, that's not going to happen until this needle comes down, which is another thing that seems to take forever. So we're just going to kind of sit here. And while we're waiting for that, I'm guessing uh, now would be a good time to turn on the rest of lights. So we have the taxi lights and we have the landing lights. Now bear in mind, I am right clicking on the landing lights to get them up. There we go. A few more seconds and the uh, radar altimeter should be good to go. And then we should be good to go. Oh, there it is right now. Okay, so this button lights up. You can see it clearly in the dark, but obviously it's eh, not nearly as lit as it should be. So we're going to go ahead and rotate this knob down. You can just use the mouse wheel for that. Put it to zero. Light goes out. Pull it back up. I usually keep it around 20 meters, thereabout. And that's it. Believe it or not, folks, that is everything you needed to do to start this helicopter. In all, it took me, what, about... 15 16 minutes at the most not too shabby and now that we've got everything started let's go take it for a little flight after I turn off the autopilot there we go incidentally to turn the autopilot off is that red button right there you don't necessarily have to do like I do but I'm just telling you, for me, it makes life a ton easier to fly this thing with the autopilot off. Alright, but, let's get airborne. I thought I heard another um, hip out there, so let's see if we can find it and maybe we can trail it. I know he's around here somewhere. Okay, well, I'm not seeing him, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and lift off anyway. And that will just about do it for my little cold start tutorial. Hopefully this was helpful to you if you do decide to get the MI-8 hip. And I really do recommend it. When I first started flying this helo, I hated it. I hated the fact that it was big, it was heavy, it was cumbersome, and it had way too many switches. But now that I've actually grown to love using it, I can't imagine flying anything else. So, if you've learned something, and if you've enjoyed this little video, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you for the next one, where we'll do a little bit more action here and less uh, tutorial type stuff. Alrighty folks, this has been Bell Geode and I've been flying in DCS World in the MI-8 hip. I will catch you all really soon. Ciao!